Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Welcome back to my movie reviews. And it's been a while since I've done one. I was mostly focusing on uploading commercial breaks that I have for my VHS tapes and I just transferred them to DVD enough for me to upload them. And I just did a rant on the upcoming Blu-ray release of The Good Son. So. <laughs> Still can't forget that fiasco. But, if that wasn't bad enough, I'm actually reviewing a bad movie that just came out recently in June. Yep, and it stars Tom Cruise. Go figure. It's well, just the third remake called simply The Mummy. More like The Dummy. Yeah, in fact, we've been getting so many versions of The Mummy that it just seems like Universal is just coming up with new ideas for a new franchise. And that's what they did. In fact, they're doing exactly what they did with Marvel and DC. is to create their own movie universe called simply Dark Universe. So, Yeah, because Marvel had the MCU, which stands for Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they focus uh, between all the other um, universes for for all the uh, the Marvel comic characters out there and then also uh, DCEU uh, for DC Comics is for the which stands for of course DC Comics Entertainment Universe is basically following a series uh, on other uh, superhero characters of their own too so now Universal decided to do this on their own but for monsters. So that means we get to see stories from The Invisible Man, The Mummy, which I'm talking about right now, which is going to be the first installment. And this is the first installment of the series. Another Frankenstein movie. Boy, are we getting that nowadays? It's getting tiresome. Same way here. I think we're going to get Gill Man, maybe another Wolfman movie. I don't know. And maybe even another Dracula film they fought about it. I know they said Dracula Untold was going to be one. Part of it. I think Wolfman was going to be part of it too. Yeah. I mean Universal had tried to do that before with simply The Mummy from 1999. Which had uh, Brendan Fraser in it. I know Tom Cruise was originally going to play uh, Brendan Fraser's character uh, Cameron O'Connor. But he took the role. So now this time Tom Cruise is actually doing this version. And sad to say, it's the worst. Way, way worse. Let me tell you something. I'd rather watch Tomb of the Dragon Emperor over this. I'd rather watch um, Ben Helsing over this. Yeah, which that's the film that got criticized a lot. At least, um, I mean, despite of how over the top the CGI was in that movie at least it was fun and I can deal with that but this is garbage it's boring uninteresting and not only that but it's dead on arrival that means that it was already dead before it arrived in theaters before it was announced they knew it was dead. And it shows. Because what I just saw, I was um, completely stone faced. Like, I was hoping there's going to be some funny moments here and there. Like, I hoped they were going to have some, some fun and excitement, just like the 1999 version did. Like, it was trying to be like Indiana Jones in a way. None of it here. It's like Tom Cruise is just definitely uh, out of his league in this film. And it shows. And it's such a shame too because Tom Cruise can do better. And he has done better. I mean he did films like Edge of Tomorrow which is a film I mean people should definitely go see at the time. But luckily it's on Blu-ray now so at least you get a chance to watch it. That's a better film than this. I know he was doing all these Mission Impossible movies, but even those films are better than this. 
And the sad part about this, it almost makes the War of the Worlds remake look like a masterpiece. I hated that film, but granted though, at least he was good in the film, and the special effects were quite ahead of its time, even by 2005 standards. But that film had problems, and I mean a lot of problems. The story wasn't written very well either, and it was definitely one of Spielberg's disappointments. Yeah, people said that 1941 was his worst film. I'd say that movie, at least, had the courage to actually make a, a, a good parody of the attack on Pearl Harbor. But hey, I love 1941. I like that movie more than War of the Worlds. I love Independence Day more than that. But, sorry to say this, but I think I'd rather stick to the 1953 version. The radio broadcasts uh, by Orson Welles, that all of which are based on the book, and by H.G. Wells, and of course, I'd rather watch the 1988 TV series, which is a lot darker than the 2005 version. I said it. It makes me want to watch that version more than this. Because... <laughs> I know, I know we've been getting bad movies every year, but I knew that this movie was going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad. So, well, anyway, let's get on with it. The movie stars Tom Cruise, Annabelle Wallace, Sophia Batella. For those who don't know, she was from the movie. King's Man, The Secret Service. In fact, she was the best part of the film, playing the villain. Yeah. As you may know. She also went on to do the film Star Trek Beyond, last year. Jake Johnson has been best known for, for being in the TV series uh, New Girl, with Zoe Deschanel. And I know he's been in other stuff. In fact, he was even in the movie uh, Jurassic World in 2015. Yeah. Russell Crowe, been best known for films like Virtuosity, Gladiator, as well as um, many other films he's been in, like American Gangster and Noah, and Courtney B. Bantz. Written by David Cope, who's been best known for writing the screenplay for Jurassic Park, Carlito's Way, yeah. Chris McCrory, and Dylan Kuzman, and it's directed by Alex Kurtzman, yep, who happens to be the screenwriter of the first two Transformers movies. The movie begins set in the New Kingdom era. We meet Princess Amonet, who's played by Sophia Bratella who was chosen to succeed from her father who suddenly has a second wife who gave birth to a son so that's what causes her to be completely jealous and evil as she decided to sell her own soul to an Egyptian god named Set who happens to be her lover and agrees to help her by using a dagger that has an Egyptian ruby on the handle to transfer his spirits into a corporal form. So after she started to kill her family, she winds up sacrificing her lover until the Egyptian priest had captured her and decided to mummify her, which by the way, her actual power that she uses transformed her into that particular um, powerful evil princess that has all these Egyptian the tattoos all the way around her body. She has all these eyes that are like four eyes that are very creepy. So they're trying to make her look as as scary as she could be. <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile during the present day in Iraq, because every movie these days are always had to be set in the Middle East you know, during the war, we meet a soldier named Nick Morton who's played by Tom Cruise, 
along with his wimpy sidekick and best friend, Chris Fell, who's played by Jake Johnson, who accidentally discovered the tomb of Ominent after an airstrike had occurred. And that's where we meet a female archaeologist, Janie Halsey, who's played by Annabelle Wallace, which basically Nick had a one-night stand with her, go figure. So that's why she bitch slapped him. So they decided to arrive and, and investigated the tomb that's inside, which suddenly is set somewhere in the prison. So they suddenly found Almanac's sarcophagus and wants to have taken it directly to the transport plane with Nick's superior Colonel Greenway, who's played by Cordy B. Bance. Already planned to be headed to London, England. You know, during that flight, they they begin to discover that Chris has been possessed by the mummy's curse, which is part of Amanat's power. Yep, because it actually happened while he was bitten by a camel spider while during the investigation. So he stabs uh, Greenway. With the dagger, yep, which they bought back its cliche, that the black guy dies first. I might be blindsided though, but I'm not so sure who died first before him, but I'm pretty certain that he died first. So I could be wrong, but I might be right. Okay, but let's not get to that. And then he started killing all the other soldiers before the plane started to go completely out of control while... You know, Jenny wants up parachuting by jumping out of the plane, while Nick wants up uh, in the plane as it crashes. So the next day, Nick was awakened from a morgue that's at uh, Oxford University Hospital in London, England, only to find out that his friend Chris is a ghost that's being possessed by Ominent and was actually used as a vessel for set. Yeah, because I guess they knew they were going to go for that these days. <laughs> so now he's the only one who can actually see him. And yes, he did shot him three times because, well, he scared him. <laughs> uh, see, they have to come up with jokes like this. Um, Chris also explains that Nick has the mummy's curse on him. So that explains why he survived from the plane crash once he woke up. Because after all, he's the vessel from set. So then um, they, they went to a restaurant, um, had a conversation, Jenny trying to explain to Nick that, uh, that, he ex that she actually is an agent. Uh, working for the Progiums that's uh, he headed by leader Dr. Henry Jekyll who's played by Russell Crowe. So they find a way to actually help him, try to find a way to to stop the mummy's curse from Princess Ominent. Which, what happened was um, Princess Ominent suddenly revives and wants up uh, feeding on all the rescue workers around uh, London and was ready to attack Nick somewhere in a nearby church while Jenny suddenly was shocked and found out that he was there just as Aminet was ready to stab him and this is when the, she, she was shocked and amazed by and just as he was when he actually went and looked at her saying Right, right in front of uh, her and all the rest of the the mummy zombies uh, out there, actually watches them saying, "Jenny." Like, like it's almost like if <laughs> it's almost acting like you know she was ready to have sex with him or something, but no, she was ready to stab him. And they just escaped from the church, and they're ready to be chased by them. They even try to, to kill them, but, well, no use, because there's going to be more chasing them around anyway. So then, they want, they want it being picked up 
by Henry, Dr. Henry Jekyll, along with his crew, because they worked at a, uh, a secret society called the Potogenium, which is dedicated to hunting all the supernaturals out there. That's under the Natural History of Museum in London. So that's what they're trying to plan on. And of course, with Dr. Henry Jekyll, we all soon know that he's a creature himself, because that's why he created uh, Edward Hyde. Yes, we already know the story by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, what leads to this, though, he becomes uh, Edward Hyde. He winds up attacking Nick. And suddenly, Aminette, who's already been uh, captured, winds up summoning another spider to go after one of, uh, one of the technicians. And, and he was ready to become you know, one of the mummy. They're just going around chasing them. Yeah, there was a fight scene with Nick and, and uh, Mr. Hyde. So they, so he wants to being guided by Chris by going straight into, with uh, Jenny to the London Underground tunnels, so that way they can stop him before they're being attacked even more by those minions and all the rest. Sorry, my mind is all uh, flushed out by how stupid this movie is, but. Anyway, I mean, but Nick is trying to find a way to um, try to summon the power and try to, to stop Ominent and the rest of her minions and, and mummies and all the rest from happening. Plus there was a sandstorm that happened um, around London and all of that that went in the way. <sighs> I just, I mean, he has to find a way to actually use the dagger to actually stab her. And then the movie will be over, as we know it. So, I'm just going to stop right there, because this movie is so bad that <laughs> it just boggles my mind. It's like they're trying this hard to come up with a mummy movie that's supposed to be an actual horror movie with a mix of action and some comedy elements and all this other stuff but it just wants up being forgettable boring uninteresting and and definitely dead on arrival right away and it really shows um, I thought Tom Cruise was woefully miscast and totally out of place in this movie it really shows that that we basically see Tom Cruise just playing a dumb character. Not interesting at all. Just just ridiculous. It almost seemed like he's sort of doing a variation of the character in Edge of Tomorrow in a way, but except his character was a lot well written, well acted, and and definitely shows how his character really is. But this one just didn't do it for me. And I just feel like he was just totally wrong for this project. Jake Johnson, on the other hand, was really annoying. His character was really stupid. And it really shows he's a wimp and a complete asshole. It's like, yeah, we yeah, we get it though. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like doing all these stupid adventures and, and he doesn't like being with him. Big fucking deal. Uh, I thought Annabelle Wallace was completely wasted as Jenny Hazley. I think she could have been a lot better. Um, she could have been better uh, written as as a female archaeologist and and of course um, an agent. I mean, I think she could have been written better if, if they knew they were going to give her something. Because apparently she's. She, she isn't the, the greatest uh, archaeologist we ever had. And I, that's just the problem. But it's not her fault, though. It's just... 
it's just the the way the writing really is. It's just they, they just could have done so much better. On the other hand, though, I thought Sophia Batella, who played Princess Ominent, was actually very good. I'll give you that. I thought she uh, definitely shows how she can play an evil princess. She has the power. She could definitely do whatever she wants. The problem is, though, because of the shitty script that's written by David Cope, along with Christopher McQuarrie and and uh, Dylan Cussman, it's obviously they, they just couldn't do any justice to her. And it's such a shame. I mean, even though she is attractive, she is very sexy, she could be scary too. I mean, that's what I want in that character. And I really, I really want that too. And I also didn't mind uh, Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I mean, I could definitely take him as a leader. And, and it really shows that he can be more, uh, more uh, promising and scary and interesting too. I mean, I, I almost expected him to be over the top like how he was when he played Sid 6.7 in Virtuosity, so this was almost like a variation of that. A little bit, but I can definitely see what he's doing here. But other than that though, I thought the special effects were, were just iffy. Uh, nothing special for me. Considering how lazy the script was that's written by these guys, the score wasn't that memorable either. It's by Brian Tyler. I mean, they, he tries to create such a haunting score for this movie, but it doesn't seem that scary enough to deal with. The cinematography, while it did have some beautiful shots here and there, the rest of it is just simple, dark and murky types that they put in. Yeah, mostly when they go into the underground and all the others. And it just wasn't that impressive either. I don't know. I just... I mean, god damn it. They had to go for this these days. When they had to make the creatures. Uh, using all these minions. And, and all these uh, terrifying mummies that didn't look that impressive at all. When they did this in the movie. So that's why the CGI wasn't that impressive. Even the sandstorm was... Uh, uninteresting even with the ones that are shot uh, in the water or, or throughout uh, London you yeah, know with the face uh, in the sandstorm just didn't do it for me that's why I did it better in the 1999 version yeah. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised if they even did some references to the 1999 movie because it seemed like maybe that's what they were going for. I don't know. The plane scene in the movie that was going around and around and around which probably causes all the pilots to get sick, well from what I heard. I mean they, they had to shoot this scene over and over and over again. Basically almost starting to look almost like it was shot in zero gravity or something. But hey, they did it. And yes, Tom Cruise was known for doing his stunts, so he did most of it. I mean, with all the chase scene and and all the frills where he goes around um, fighting against uh, Mr. Hyde and does go after the, all these mummies and the minions all around, and trying to and actually had a fight scene between him and and ominent. It's like, yeah, it goes on and on. Even the action scenes with the airstrike that happened while they were in Iraq. Yeah, with his uh, friend Chris. Yeah, even, even with the motorcycle scene. Yeah, he was uh, riding around with him. Or the fact that they were riding on the, the horse. In fact, none of this film works at all on so many levels. I mean, I think people are getting tired of it already. They knew this was going to be a bomb, and it shows. In fact, this movie's already a flop at the box office already. 
It's already getting negative reviews from critics. I mean, they knew this movie was a disaster, and indeed it is. Uh, it just wasn't that impressive, and it's just sad, because this could have been done a whole lot better than what it was given, but all wise, what's the point? I, I don't think, to me, this is kind of unnecessary. We didn't, I think people are getting tired of all these mummy movies, just as people are getting tired with all these Frankenstein films. I mean, there's like so many these days that people are getting tired of it. I mean, we already had the 1938 film with Boris Koloff, along with the 1959 film that started to have a series of its own. And then we got the 1999 film with Brendan Fraser, and directed by Stephen Summers, that, had, that brought us uh, The Mummy Returns and The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, which also had spin-offs with The Scorpion King, along with their sequels. So, what's the point? Why do we need this? Exactly. You know why? Because of fucking money. That's why. Nobody cares about quality anymore. All they care about is making a buck these days. They can't come up with a better script anymore to save this fucking movie. And that shows. So, without a doubt, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen this summer. Don't worry, Tom Cruise can do better. He'll probably do another film that will make it up from this terrible film. In fact, let's just pretend like this movie didn't exist. So, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I mean, this movie stinks. And completely stinks like a complete dummy. And that's what this movie should have been called. The Dummy. Because it's a fucking dummy of a film. That's an insult to all the mummy movies out there. Including the 1999 version. In fact, just stick to the 1999 version and all the other ones that came before that. Because it's so much better. That's all I can say. So anyway, I get this garbage of a film, The Mummy. One star. I'm Joseph A. Saboro. And I'll see you later, much later. Bye.